everyone, Jared James Nichols here, and I am so excited to be on this episode of Riff Lords. It's an honor for me to break down some of the favorite riffs that I've written and show them to you guys, and hopefully it's gonna inspire you to write some riffs of your own. So get your guitars tuned up to E standard, get ready to shred blues power style. So the first song I wanna show you guys, the first riff is a song I wrote. It's on my record, Old Glory and the Wild Revival. This is one of the first riffs I ever wrote when I was getting ready to go into a studio to make my record. This one's called Baby Can You Feel It? Now, it's no surprise that I'm influenced by ZZ Top and Joe Walsh and Mountain and Cream and all of the great blues and blues rock that has come before me. So for me, I wanted to write like an up-tempo kind of shuffle boogie with a great, cool, fun riff to play. And what's funny about it is when I wrote it, I was almost just kind of messing around, like getting ready to say, okay, I'm gonna write the riff now. And then it just kind of fell out. And the producer I was working with, Warren Hewitt, said right there too, that's the riff. And we were like, let's add a little something to it. And that's something that I always do with when I'm writing riffs. I try and create something simple and then add to it, kind of give it a little more flair. So let me play that riff for you guys right now and then we will break it down. <laughs> So let's break this one down. Okay, we're starting, we're in the key of A, right? A blues, A minor pentatonic, if you wanna think that way. And the first thing that we're doing is we're starting with a big hit on this A chord right here. Now you guys are gonna notice, I don't play with a pick, right? Never fear, you can use your pick to play all these riffs. I write with my left hand and the pick was never very comfortable for me. So instead of trying to figure that out, I kind of adapted this old school kind of bluesy finger style technique. I was, you know, listening to guys like Jeff Beck, Hubert Sumlin, guys like that. And I just figured that playing with my fingers worked for me. So, okay, back to the riff. Starting with a big strike on that low A chord. And then you're following that up with a little, almost kind of like a boogie riff. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your middle finger on the third fret of the A string Hammer that on to your ring finger to the fourth fret. And then right away, snap up on the second fret of your G string, right? So it sounds like this. And now what you guys will notice is rhythm is really important. The whole time I'm playing this, I'm hearing a shuffle in my head. I'm thinking that I have a drummer behind me. I'm feeling the band. I think, you know, writing riffs and playing riffs one of the biggest factors is the rhythm and the dynamics on which you hit the riffs. So you'll notice I'm kind of smacking it and choking it right here. That's the first riff. So one more time, A, cut it, hammer on from the third to fourth fret on, the, on that A string to the second fret on the G string. And now what we do from there is we actually slide up to the fifth fret. Now we're getting into that like bluesy territory, kind of getting those double stops, right? So what I'm doing is I'm having an open A string and underneath it on the fourth fret on your D string with your index and then the fifth fret on the G string with your middle finger, I'm sliding that up a half step. So that gives us that really cool kind of bluesy sound right away. So with that added, Now what we're gonna do from there is we go to kind of like a four chord. Now I know this is a lot, but it's very simple when you see it. You take your ring finger and you bar cross on your D and G strings on the seventh fret. Right there. And then come and do it right here on the fifth fret. And you're taking your middle finger and just hitting it and hammering on to the sixth fret on your G string. So that whole move together, it's kind of cool, it's almost like kind of country-ish, is. It's very cool, because you know, you need to think about having that open A string to give more sound, give more dynamic to it. 
So now the whole riff ends with a button up on a G chord, striking that, coming off, and then we're right back on the top of it. So if I play the whole riff slow, it sounds like this. Now, it's, it's just a big rolling factor. And I'm the kind of player that, you know, I never play the same thing twice. So every time I'm playing this riff, I'm kind of like adding little nuances, adding different, you know, hammer-ons or pull-offs, or maybe I'm hitting a different note at certain points to make it sound a little different. And for me, I thrive on that. So I'm sorry right away if I'm playing the riff a little differently here, a little differently there. It's just like that old school kind of style of adding your own flavor to it. So I'm gonna play that riff all the way through. Here we go. And you'll notice the second time around, instead of coming down to the G, I held on to this one right here with that double stop on the fifth fret on your D and G, and I started to add that hammer on. And what that kind of makes it sound like now is it just gives it almost a call and response factor. And I think that's such a cool point in the riff. Let's say you play the riff three times, right? The first time. So the second time I kind of messed it up, I, I played it a little different. And then I just add kind of a button blues lick on the end of it. Now in this case, what I usually like to do is I like to add almost like a response in a higher register. So during the fourth, fourth round, I would come up here to the 10th fret on my B string with my ring finger, hitting that to the eighth fret, sliding down from the ninth fret on the G string to the seventh fret to the fifth fret, play that exact same riff in octave lower and that's starting on the D string on the seventh fret. I'll hammer on from the fifth. Very, all pentatonic, all really boxed pentatonic. So. And that's the whole riff. So first round, very cool, very simple. Second round, I'm adding a hammer on at the end. Third round, I'm playing it pretty cool and simple. And then I'm buttoning the whole thing up with this little pentatonic run. And that's the riff of Baby Can You Feel It? And the coolest part about this is the more you play it, the more you get in the groove, the more you feel it, you start taking chances and do different things. And I think as long as you have that shuffle running in the back of your head and you're really just feeling that, you can do no wrong. So here's that riff all the way high speed, full blues power. So with that one, really just play it wide open and feel that shuffle. This song is called Threw Me to the Wolves. This is the latest single I released. And I thought I'd bring this one up because it kind of showcases a super cool pattern, a rhythm that I use a lot, that's really near and dear to my heart. And I kind of heard it from the old blues guys. It's, I call it like a dead bass pattern, but basically what I'm doing is with my thumb, I'm muting these bass strings and I'm kind of playing a rhythm off them. So check this out. If I just play it nice and slow and quiet, you can hear what I'm talking about. Now if I add. Kind of cool, right? So the whole reasoning behind this, not only because I play fingerstyle, is because I play in a trio. 
So when I'm playing in a trio, I'm the only guitar player. I have a bass and I have drums, right? So I have to fill out sound. I have to think of different ways to play rhythms. One of the coolest things I always thought was having that pulse, having that heartbeat behind my lead guitar playing. So Three Me To The Wolves, I wrote this song, it was about eight months ago. And the whole reasoning behind this is I wrote it on an acoustic guitar. A lot of the music that I write, a lot of the riffs I write, you know, sometimes it's like I'll pick up a guitar and it'll have a certain tone and it, a riff will fall out. I always say riffs fall out. Like this one, the riff fell out when I picked up this old Gibson acoustic guitar. I sat there and I just started feeling the guitar and I was like, okay. I started to get in this kind of groove and it felt good. So this, what I want to show you guys right now is just the basic chords to kind of the intro and the verse of Threw Me To The Wolves. Now, if you want to think about it this way, it's very simple. It's an A minor chord, nothing fancy, just that A minor chord, right? To a C chord, an old C cowboy chord, right? To a G. Those are the three chords. So we have A minor, C, G. And now you can kind of tell why I wrote it on an acoustic and why it felt this way. So what I'm doing is I'm basically doing a bounce off of these chords. So starting with this pickup line, Threw Me To The Wolves, it kicks off like this, an open D string, and you're hammering on to the second fret of that D string to an open G string. It's open. And then we tuck it back in, you start with this bass picking of an open A string and you're on this A minor chord. So what I'm doing is I'm making a pattern that starts with an open G string hammering on to the second fret, which is an A note. Following that up with a little run with my index finger holding basically an A minor chord, first fret on your B string and then an open E string and kind of rolling off that. Now you'll be able to do this with a pick using the pick and your fingers as well. But if you watch closely on this hand, you'll see I kind of have a weird, unorthodox way of picking it. It's uh... So it's almost like the thumb is the anchor with the low notes. And then I'm playing little melodies on top of that, variations on an A minor chord. I love the way that riffs kind of fall out like this. So, and then I'm following that up with the C chord. So right there I have a C chord, just, just envision in your mind a C chord, and I'm keeping an open G string, an open E string, and I'm hammering on that, that first fret on the B. So. And my, my bass note is that C note. And then following that up with a G chord. So here's the G. Using that same hammer on on the first fret of the B string with the open G and E. So I want to play the whole section for you and very slowly break it down. Here we go. What you'll notice is I'm adding a few little things. So let me show you those. I'm kind of doing this bluesy run where I almost hiccup on this third fret of your A string. It just kind of gives it a bluesy flair. I always do that. I always add little things like that. And then as well, I'm walking up to the C. So just be mindful of those. So one more time. So that's it. And the reason I'm showing you guys this riff is because it's such a cool technique that I feel like you guys can use in your own playing. And it's almost like adding, either with your thumb or with your pick, having this bass to walk on. And now I do this through the whole song, so go check this out on this song. 
It's this whole walking pattern and I'm able to use it for soloing, I'm able to use it for any chords. So the real reality is once you get this bass going, the coolest part is writing riffs over it. So I can play A minor pentatonic stuff, A blues stuff over it using the chord progression, this feel, and check out this sound. start creating off of that. And that's really how I thought a lot of riffs started to come up for me in that song. Now I'm doing this other technique. This is like a little trick I always do. So make sure you guys steal this and use it somewhere. What I like to do when I'm holding a chord is I use my hand and I bend the neck a little bit. It's almost like a, a, a mini vibrato. So check this out. If I You have to find it on every guitar. It's a little different. Now, don't do it so crazy that you, you know, you hurt your guitar. But I like to add this sound, and when you hear it, you almost can. It's like right there in the back. So check it out. Very technical, right? I'm literally just shaking the neck of the guitar to give it a cool effect. But I think that when you do it right, it adds a little something to it. So I think that's a kind of a cool little technique. There's one more riff I wanna show you from Through Me to the Wolves. It's going into the solo. Now this is where we go from this finger picking idea, this pattern, and we almost go to one of, another huge influence to me, Pete Townsend, The Who, some power chords, some big chords, incorporating that with a callback riff. So I'm gonna play that for you right now, and I wanna kinda of walk you guys through that. So we're still in the key of A, of course, so here's the riff. That was the riff. So it's pretty cool, it's two parts I'd say. You have this really awesome, kind of pumping, punchy chord stabs, followed up by the response, yet again the call and response thing, up here, it's a, it's a A blues run using a double stop. So let me show you those chords real quick and then we'll get into the single note stuff. So we have, starting here, on basically a G chord, I'm hitting the lower half, and one thing you'll notice with me a lot when I'm playing chords, I like to pick out a few notes specifically and I like to target those notes. So when you hear me play this, I'm not playing. I'm not trying to play the whole chord. I'm just trying to get the meat of the chord and the, the, the notes that I really want. So here that is, I'm really hitting. Right there, you'll see it. I'm hitting that right there, which is a G, with an open D and G string. Following that up straight away with an open A string, uh, second fret on your D and G giving us that A chord. And you'll hear it's super punchy, right? So. That's the riff. So think of the rhythm in your head. And guys, if you're not using one already, make sure when you're writing riffs, when you're learning riffs, when you're trying to figure stuff out, Tempo, the rhythm, it's so important. So when I think about it, I go one, two, three. That's the riff. Kind of gives me like an ACDC vibe too, right? So moving on to the double stop single note section of this riff, we're up here. Now I'm sliding, I'm doing another slide and I'm on my ring and middle fingers on the G string sliding from the eighth fret to the ninth fret, and then on the B string, right along with it from the seventh to the eighth fret, right? So it sounds like this. Very bluesy, very cool. Um, I'm sliding, and remember guys, a little bit of vibrato on there and attack it. It gives it that really nice kind of sheen and it makes it pop out. So right there. Following that straight up, with a slide down to the seventh fret on the G string, and then to the fifth fret on the G string, 
And then right after that, guys, I'm coming to the D string and I'm going to the seventh fret. Classic blues lick. So following that down one more time, slide up. Now, as you know, I've told you this before, I never play the same thing twice. I never play anything correctly, but what I like to do is I like to embellish that. So what I'll sometimes do is I'll do a, a pull off to a hammer on from the fifth fret to the seventh, or from the seventh fret to the fifth fret on the D string to button that up. So all together. So that's the first half, right? Playing the whole first half slow sounds like this. All about that bending and vibrato. That's one of the things I work on so much in the riffs. Besides rhythm is that attack, getting it to come out clear and really having it pronounced and make a statement with the riff. So we do that again, the chords again, and then we have a different answer riff. Same thing, we're sliding again on the G and B string from the eighth fret on the G and the seventh fret on the B. But this time we're coming quicker down. Very simple, very easy, but you just wanna let that riff run. Classic, where I'm basically trailing the riff doing an octave section. So, adding a little embellishment there on the seventh and fifth fret of the G string, sounds like this. That sometimes gets weird when you're, you know, writing riffs, when you're really trying to make a statement to get all those to sound right. So playing that very slowly. And guys, a lot of times I won't even pick that section. I'll just do hammer-ons and pull-offs, which you can hear right here. And then I follow that with the exact same riff, just down an octave. Now I don't hit the double stop, but I do come to the seventh fret on my A string. So we have this. One of my biggest heroes, Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath. This to me reminds me of a Black Sabbath riff, taking my own way and kind of taking it somewhere else. So playing that all up to speed, check this out. Here we go. Pretty cool, right? And now what I want you guys to think about with like a riff like that is you can take that and you can just build off it. I can start to do anything around that. It's kind of a cool riff, right? Just making up different sequences, different rhythmic passages with that kind of in mind, it gives you an influence for your own riffs. So one more time, the whole riff with some attitude. It is. That, my friends, is Through Me to the Wolves. Okay, everybody, that was my riff for a song I wrote called End of Time. Now, going back to the blues, right? It's sometimes really, really hard to come up with something that you really feel good about when blues is such a well-worn, beautiful style of music. It's kind of hard sometimes to find something original that you really gel with. So for me, when I was writing that riff, 
I was almost looking back to the guys that were super old school. I mean, I'm talking like Blind Lemon Jefferson, Robert Johnson, getting that kind of vibe. And I know that it doesn't sound like that, but it was that spirit using open strings, incorporating all of those old classic open, almost cliche now, not at the time, but different lines to me to make something kind of unique. So let's start off here. It's this really cool lick up here on the fifth to seventh fret. First thing we do, we're in the key of E. So the first thing we do is we hit an open E string. And you'll see I'm using my thumb yet again, hitting that E. And now what I start to do is it's an E minor pentatonic run. Starting on the fifth fret of your A string, hammering onto the seventh fret of your A string, coming down to your D string, doing the fifth fret to the seventh fret again, and then a slide. So the first part of that riff is. Playing that one more time slowly. Yet again, going back to my heroes, everyone like Tony Iommi, Richie Blackmore. It's just this really kind of cool bluesy riff right away. And you'll notice I'm a little sloppy and my, my picking's not that great on it, but it's the way I'm kind of playing it using my pull-offs and my vibrato that kind of makes it sound, I don't know, kind of, kind of wild. So following that riff up, this riff right here, I'm sliding on my D string from the seventh fret to the ninth fret, right? And I'm following up that ninth fret, I'm holding on to that, and I'm actually hitting with my index finger an open E string underneath it. That's where my kind of thought for like the cool classic old blues stuff comes in, is incorporating open strings, and I'm gonna talk about that a lot more, but it's a really cool flair when you start to add high drone strings or low drone strings. It makes you kind of feel like the guitar starts to sound bigger. You can play them and it almost gives you this, you know, 3D quality. So adding that open E string in there, it makes the riff sound really cool. So getting up to that point. Right away following that down, right back to the seventh fret on your D string, pulling off to the fifth fret on your D string, and then to the seventh fret to the fifth fret on your D string, or on your A string, I'm sorry. So check this out. This is a really cool little box right here that you can build a lot of riffs on. So for me, right here, cool little E minor pentatonic blues box. So playing that whole riff down sounds like this. Yet again, you'll notice the hammer-ons and the pull-offs. So now that whole riff slowed down. All about the attitude, let those notes ring. It's really important with a riff like this to get that kind of grind to it. So also the attack, the attack, I can't say it enough, all about the attack. How you play the riff is almost more important than the notes that you play. It's your attitude towards all this stuff. So now playing that riff slow with more attack. <laughs> kind of embellishment going on a slide from the seventh fret on my D string to the eighth fret. Kind of gives it that cool bluesy kind of flair. Very slow. Whole riff together with that little slide in there. I watched the last Riff Lords with uh, my friend Doug Aldrich. Doug, I love you. And he called it a power slide. You're gonna notice I do a lot of power slides. I'll do a power slide up sometimes and a power slide down. This is a cool little tip. Uh, coming into you know phrases or coming into a riff, uh, a power slide down. Power slide up and down. slides. They're awesome. Okay, so finishing that riff up, 
is this little kind of callback response coming here on the fifth fret on your A string with your index finger to the seventh fret on your A string, fifth fret on the D to the seventh fret on the A. As you can see, I'm just battering that like a caveman. Answering back with a simple A chord down here in the first position to a G chord. And then we kick that whole riff off again. So that whole riff, adding the button up with the A and the G chords sounds like this. something a little left of center and I always strive for that guys because the thing is when you're writing these riffs and, and sometimes it's hard with the blues style to come up with something that feels really right but I think the coolest part is finding little things inside the riff that sound cool for me it's the slide up with the open string coming down to this cool little bluesy embellishment <laughs> attitude, the vibrato. My vibrato, especially for this riff, comes from my biggest guitar hero, Leslie West. He was the guy that got me really into that kind of snarly vibrato. So moving on to this next section, I just wanted to show this to you guys because I thought it was kind of cool because, you know, playing with my fingers and, you know, playing rhythms, I'm not always so tight. You know, with a pick, you can get very tight and consistent rhythms. But something that I started to do and I thought it was pretty cool was I was playing against the rhythm of the drums and I'm playing an E chord down here. But the way that I'm playing it is I'm hammering on on your open A and D string to the second fret, making that kind of E power chord. And then I'm responding up here with an open B and E string. So the whole riff goes. This is the verse section and what's kind of cool about this is I'm singing over it and it takes your riff from this cool single note structure to all of a sudden you're playing this kind of counterintuitive part, very simple part, but you're just hammering down on it. I'm using like downstrokes and it just has this really cool feel to it. So always remember counting the rhythms, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm going. answer is sliding from the third fret to the fifth fret on your E string and back down to the third. Nice and bluesy, right? So that whole riff together at speed sounds like this. Now, you'll notice I start to embellish the rhythms. It's such a cool factor, guys, adding almost like a gallop in there. It really takes it from one place to another. So I thought that was kind of cool. I just wanted to show you how I played that. So the whole thing all together, one more time. Here we go, from the top. is my song called Honey Forgive Me. Okay, so check this out. This is a super cool riff that I wanted to show everyone. I think that this riff kind of encapsulates everything I love about blues rock. Okay, hear me out. So the finger picking thing. When I started my trio, I knew that I needed to do something a little different, something a little left of center with the riffs that I wrote to kind of get them to stick out, kind of almost like a sore thumb. 
So using my fingers, I found quickly that if I use open strings to follow my riffs, it gave it this more powerful sound. Like I said about End of Time, there's this 3D quality you get when you start to add almost drone notes or, or some sort of opening with a riff. And with Honey Forgive Me, it's the, the total same thing. This riff sounds so much more powerful when I use an open string along with the fretted notes. So the main riff to Honey Forgive Me, it's really cool. We're in the key of G, okay? Right down here in this kind of open position. Now, when I mean using an open string, what I'm talking about, for me, it's like a pluck technique, right? Using my thumb for the fretted notes, and then I'm having that drone string with my index finger. So check this out. If I have an open G string, anything I play underneath it, uh, it gives it this kind of tone. So without the open G string, check this out. Very simple riff. First fret to the third fret on the E string, first fret on the, on the A string, back to the, for the third fret on the E. Check this out. Sounds cool, right? What if every note that I hit, I pluck an open G string with it? So with this riff, it's a very simple kind of blues riff. Now we're, we're kind of crossing into the funky territory, but what I'm doing is I'm hitting that open G string with the riff and I'm getting all of that rub and it sounds so cool. A cool tip you guys, if you want to add this into your playing before I show you this riff is you can use this as a low drone by using your uh, thumb over the neck. So if you're in the key of G, let's say using G minor pentatonic, you can play. Now I would use my thumb to hit this, you can play a G minor pentatonic scale with this underneath it. Every note sounds like this. But if, if you start to improvise with it, you get that sound. You can maybe do it every other note, kind of just add it in where you feel it. So check this out. It's a cool technique and when I found that out, it sounds, it almost sounds wrong. It sounds dirty and disgusting, but I love it. And like I said, playing in a trio, this saved me. Cause instead of just playing a simple riff, maybe in unison with the bass player, this gave us another voice on top. So, honey, forgive me, back to it. Breaking down that riff, it starts here and you're really regulating from your third fret and your first fret on your A string and on your E string with that open G on top of it. So the riff starts like this. It's a slide down from your fourth fret to your third fret on the A string. I'm using my ring finger. So it's very rhythmic. So without that G, just listen to this. It's just a variation between a string, E string, third fret to the first fret, but it's just that blues lick, right? So if you wanna kinda cut it up a little bit, you can start by just this phrase. Very simple, very easy, going on your A string, and then coming down here to the E string, hitting third fret, first fret, third fret. And then you're almost doing your response. I noticed that a lot of my songs have call and response, which is like blues land all day. So check this out. So here we go. That's the whole riff. Pretty simple riff, right? You just kind of got to get it in your head, kind of get your hands around it. Cool. Now the magic sauce adding the rub of that open G string in this riff makes this riff come alive. Check it out. So we got. Anything I play with the open G string, I'm able to kind of get that kind of girthiness to it. And what you'll notice too is, although I'm not using a pick, yet again, I'm using the palm of my hand to do a lot of muting, which really helps me with riffs. It really helps keep it percussive and it helps keep me in sort of a groove. So if I'm playing that slow with the open G string, check this out. Now 
every time I'm picking a note, I'm hitting the open G string with it. So here we go again. It's almost like a bounce, right? So. The whole song relies on that open G string. Now, this is kind of why I wanted to show you this one to you is because using open strings in any keys, you find relative notes with open strings, anything that kind of works, and it gives you this whole nother aspect. So it took a riff that I wrote very simple, uh, you know, just a regular. <laughs> adding that open G string. It's a cool flare and I want to tell you guys, you know, when I'm playing guitar, I want it to sound as big as possible. And I think using those open G, the open G string on that riff, incorporating that into my playing makes my guitar sound bigger and it sounds fuller. Another thing is really important is I'm riding my volume and tone controls a lot. Now, I don't know if you've been paying attention or noticing it, but really where I'm setting my volume knob means everything, you know. I can play that riff with the volume knob, let's say it's at five, right? And we get. Pretty clean, right? If I roll that thing all the way up. It's dirty. So I'm very, very aware of this volume knob and where I'm setting it as far as playing riffs. If you're playing a riff and you have your tone control all the way off, you get that kind of woman tone, right? That, uh, um. When I roll that tone all the way up, same riff. It's very, very important. So make sure to remember, always check and always Mess around with your volume and tone controls on your guitar because it's so important to nailing a riff. So one more time, slowly with the open G riff for, for Honey Forgive Me. Here we go. Okay, everybody, that's my song, Nails in the Coffin. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is I turned on some effects, right? So what I'm using is a Univibe pedal. It's kind of a, you know, an ode to one of my heroes, Robin Trower, of course, and of course, Jimi Hendrix. So using that Univibe kind of gives me a little bit more of a spacey effect. It gives kind of a shimmer to the notes, almost like a warble, and I really love that. And yet again, writing Nails in the Coffin it's set up on an acoustic guitar. So these notes that you're hearing me kind of ring out, they're following my voice. And what's so cool about that is every time the chord changes, I add something or take something away from the little chime. I really think of it as like a chimey part. And it's a really cool lick, it's very simple, and you'll see it's kind of an easy finger picking pattern to get down. And what I'm doing is the whole song, it's the same chords through the whole song. It's an E minor chord, going to a C chord, going to an A minor chord, to a G chord, to a B chord, okay? So here's our E minor. To a C. To an A minor. To a G. And then following up, I use a B7 chord, so it looks like this on, you'll be on your second fret with your middle finger on the A string. So 
So I wanna play you those chords, and then I'm gonna play you this little finger-picked melody that I kinda came up with for my vocal. So check this out, here's the chords. <laughs> Check out this little melody right here, coming on the ninth fret on your G string, playing an E minor triad. Adding now a C note on top of that, which makes this a C major seven. Turning this into an A minor chord, coming right here with my middle finger on the ninth fret of the G string and then my ring on the 10th fret of the B string, my index following up on the 8th fret of the E string. Going back to our E minor triad, and then making a B triad right here. So I'm simply following the chords, but the way that I'm doing it with the, the kind of the finger picking pattern, it gives you almost this eerie feeling. So playing it very slowly, getting that pattern down, got a cool weird sound to it and when you really start to get the rolling with the finger picking it's so cool and it sounds so beautiful uh, if you want to try it you could obviously use your pick using your middle finger and your ring finger to make the roll and for me I'm using my thumb my thumb is always staying on that the lowest bass note and then I'm accenting that with my index in my middle so yet again playing an E minor triad making that a C major seven chord by adding my pinky on the 10th fret of the D string. Coming back to an A minor triad right here. Back to the E minor triad. And then coming with a B. So it's really, really cool and you know, this is a whole nother shade, a whole nother style as compared to like more bombastic bluesy stuff, but it still has a cool blues vibe to it. So I'm gonna play it one more time slowly for you, that whole progression. And then when I hit the chorus, I just go into the big chords, big open chords. Yet again, same chords, E minor. C, and I'm doing a C kind of like a over G thing. A minor. G. And a B. Pretty funky, pretty cool. And this kind of just goes to show you guys that no matter what you're playing, if you're, you know, you're playing in a band and you have a low riff, one guy or one gal is playing power chords, you can come up and do an arpeggio. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of following those chords and giving it kind of a spooky, eerie vibe. And next thing I want to show you guys is this really cool slide melody. Today I'm using an old, these are my favorite slides. They're, it's an old Bromo Seltzer bottle. I found it at an antique mall and I love it. This one's probably over 100 years old and I love the way these sound. I play slide on my pinky and I don't wanna to get too much into slide technique, but I just wanna show you how I incorporate this melody and it becomes a signature riff throughout the song. So what it does over those chords, it plays this really cool melody that sounds like this.
if you don't have a slide, no fear. You can still play it with your fingers, totally fine. So I play slide and open tuning always. I don't ever really change it just because I want it to be easy when I'm playing a riff, I can throw on a slide and keep going. So that starts, it's all on the B string. It starts on the 12th fret of your B string, right? So without the slide, the fretted 12th. Sliding up to the 15th fret on your B string. Very simple. And then comes down to your 10th fret, to your 8th fret. So breaking that down, it's all E minor pentatonic based. And what I'm doing is I'm starting on the B string on the 12th fret, coming up to the 15th fret, and then coming all the way down to the 10th to the 8th fret on the B string. So all together that sounds like this. And now keep in mind, I'm following the chord changes with this melody. So it's very simple. You wanna make it sound very full, very melodic. And that's why I like to use the slide. So with my fingers, it sounds like this. Now, if you don't have a slide, no worries, use your fingers. But if you do have a slide, it sounds like this. Now adding a little bit of vibrato. As you can hear, it's very kind of slithery sounding. And then we're following that back up, starting again on the 12th fret of the B string, going up to the 15, and then coming down straight to the 10. So that all together with the slide sounds like this. Then we're adding a note that is not in the E minor pentatonic world, but it's one fret up. We're adding a C, which is the 13th fret of the B string. Coming down to the 12th. Staying there. And then when it comes to the B chord, we hit this really harsh, you know, kind of, we're adding the three of the B, creating tension in the riff. So the whole riff together slow sounds like this. So that's the whole riff. And I think that's a super cool thing that you guys should think about when you're kind of coming up with your own riffs for inspiration. Maybe throw on a slide, do something a little different. So I'm gonna play that, volume up, univibe up, and let's hear what it sounds like. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me, breaking down, showing you guys some of my favorite riffs that I've written. Now, what I expect is I wanna see you in this same position soon, showing me your favorite riffs you've written. I hope that I've given you a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of soul, and just overall a good vibe, and just be happy to play guitar. Just remember, music is not a competition. This is fun, this is awesome. We love guitar. Gold Glory right here. I am so excited. This is my second signature with Epiphone. I'm so excited to show you guys my riffs on this guitar. So I truly hope you took something cool away from this. All the best. I hope to see you on the road soon. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. Keep shredding. Blues power.